Revelation 10. Um, what you see up on the screen here, we're going to go to in a minute, Psalm 139. Uh, I just like, I'd like throwing this in here. We, when we talk about the little book, I'll show you why in a minute. So Revelation 10, 1, I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was, as it were, the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. So in my, in my mind, in my heart, every one of these are identifiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this would be, I believe, uh, would be uh, the day's of the voice of the seventh angel, which would, in in my thinking, be the last trump. I could be wrong. Uh, I am always open um, uh, to uh, being wrong if the Lord shows me something different. And um, the other day, I remember if it was yesterday or Friday, I read a verse um, that made that has made me stop and rethink some things that I've taught in the Bible. And I'm going to have to uh, just kind of spend some time with the Lord, spend some time in the Word, and get it. I won't tell you what it is yet, but just try to gain an understanding of what it was that I read. Um, one of our problems when it, when it comes to knowing what the Bible says and knowing what is it about, the Bible is small enough so that anyone can read it if they set themselves to it, but it's large enough so that you can't know and memorize every single word of every chapter of every book of every testament. You can't, there's no way, there is nobody, and to my mind, there never has been anybody except, of course, Christ the Lord, who was the Word, that would know by memory every single verse out of the Bible. I just don't know of anybody, and never, and I've never heard of anybody, uh, who could do that? So without us knowing every single word in the Bible, it would be impossible for any one person to say, I'm right on everything that I know and believe about the Bible. It'd be, it'd be impossible. There's just too many things. We like to boast on what we do know, but we don't talk about the things that we don't know. And uh, I just, I don't know at all. That much I know for sure. Uh, that three years of Bible college training just didn't quite cut it for me. Uh, all right, anyway. Um, his feet as pillars of fire, verse 2, he had in his hand. Notice this, a little book open. He set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. We recognized last Sunday and the last Sunday before that, that this uh, looked very similar to the book. That was given to Jesus in Revelation chapter 5 and 6. And um, the fact that the book was sealed when Christ got it with seven seals. And now that he has it in his hand, we see in Revelation uh, 6 and uh, 7 and 8 that he is loosing the seals. Uh, and so that the book can be opened. Once the book is opened... Then we have the seven trumpets coming out. Angel, seven angels with seven trumpets. They're coming out and they're going to blow their trumpet uh, in order. And so um, we see in Revelation 9, the, the sixth trumpet being blown. Uh, the fifth and sixth trumpet being blown. And so in Revelation 10 and 11, we're going to see the last trump or the seventh trumpet being sounded. And I say Revelation 10 because um, it says in verse 7, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. So anyway, uh, but I want to look at this little book open that he has in his hand. And so I'm going to draw your attention again to Psalm 139, 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. And I'm laying the foundation for the fact that DNA is, it's, it's not, uh, well, how can I say this without tripping you up? DNA matches what Revelation says about this book. The only adjective it gives 
in Revelation 10 concerning this book is that it's little. DNA qualifies as being little. In fact, it's so little, we can't, uh, we can't scan it with a microscope, a regular microscope, or an electronic or electron microscope. It's smaller than that. So we can't see it, which to me qualifies as a little book. But yet that little book in each, uh, in each cell of our body does exactly what you see up on the screen. It does exactly what you see in me. If you look at the person to the right and to the left of you, DNA is what made them what they are. It is a book that, um, that directs all of the actions and functions of the Bible. Let me give you an example. Um, ugh. Excuse me. Who in here has a, a draw to yawn now? Anybody? Okay, there she goes. What makes your body yawn? What makes your body yawn? Huh? It, it needs more oxygen. Okay, we usually yawn at night. Derek starting to yawn until he saw me looking at him. It's impossible to yawn and laugh at the same time. Okay, it is possible, however, to yawn and choke on something at the same time. But, but we yawn at night when we're going to bed. We yawn in the morning when we wake up, and that's our body oxygenizing all the cells, getting some new oxygen in for the cells because you're you're moving about and so on. But what what is it? that makes the body yawn, okay? You don't tell your body, I need more oxygen, I need to yawn. You don't tell your body that. It happens automatically, okay? What makes the tear ducts open on your eyes and flood your eyeball with fluid? The tear ducts do but what makes the tear ducts open up? What, what is it in your body that actually makes tears? Because tears are not just water. Okay? Um, who in here likes a really, really good beef steak? Porterhouse, tenderloin, ribeye, you name it. Okay? So imagine you're going to go to a Texas Roadhouse here for lunch. And waiting for you over there, I mean, is a nice, thick, juicy, whoever likes them rare, eat them rare. If you like them medium rare, eat it medium rare. If you like it medium, if you, or if you like it totally burnt and crispy, then that's your deal. I guarantee you, because I am, as, as bad as my mouth is in the morning about being dry, my mouth is producing saliva a little bit more than it normally does. Whose mouth now, if you pay attention to it, you have a mouthful of saliva. Okay? And it's an automatic thing. And what I'm trying to tell you is um, the fact that your, your conscious mind does not have control over your body. You cannot tell, well, I won't say it that way, but most of the functions that are taking place in your body right now, you're not consciously aware of them, and yet they're happening anyway. Your breathing, your heart rhythms, um, your uh, Matthew's yawning, it'll spread, it'll get through the whole church, okay? There's something about watching somebody yawn that triggers us to yawn. But anyway, what I'm getting at is all of these functions of your body that are taking place without you even noticing them, without you even knowing them. I mentioned last Sunday about the fact that in wintertime, we put our arms close to our body to heat, heat us up. And in summertime, we hold our arms out from our body to cool us off. And that's just how we do it. Sometimes when we're angry, 
automatically we don't even know it but if we're standing or sitting we'll do this okay maybe it's a defensive posture maybe it's a way of of uh, subtly signaling to somebody that you're kind of upset and uh, you don't like something they're doing or something they're saying but it's like your body's making a fist okay and you're just standing there like this and you do it without even noticing it you do it without even noticing it sometimes when something scares you and you wake up immediately your body's going to send out adrenaline well that adrenaline makes your heart pump fast it's called fight or flight syndrome you're either going fixing to run like it's like the story the joke that sterling tells he knows 10 jokes and he's told them several times and one of them he knows these two boys uh, was uh, they were fixing to get beat up by a bigger boy at school and they both decided to just run off well when they caught up with each other later on one of the boys had bruises all over his face had a bloody nose had a black eye and uh, the kid that got beat up asked the kid that that got away he said man I ran as fast as I as I could and I couldn't get away from him he beat me up how did you how did you you didn't get beat up the other kid said well I didn't run as fast as I could I ran as fast as I had to okay so anyway your body's you're either gonna run or you're gonna have to stand and fight somebody regardless adrenaline just automatically just blows into your body and it goes to all your muscles and it makes your muscles full of blood and and you start breathing heavily because you're trying to get oxygen to those muscles either to your leg muscles to run or your arm muscles to throw to throw punches and all of this is done automatically and when you don't use that adrenaline what happens so you can if you watch if you watch like cops on patrol i don't know what the name of the show is now since uh live pd went off the air but they've got a new show now where they're doing basically the same thing and these cops know they pull up into a car and they ask somebody they ask somebody for their license or registration and if that hand is shaking there's a reason why their body is full of adrenaline adrenaline because of the fight or flight syndrome and they didn't use the adrenaline to run or to throw punches it's there and it's making the muscles and their hands twitch and shake and a cop that's an identifier that something's wrong this guy is hiding or this gal is hiding something that they don't want me to see inside that vehicle or something's not right with them maybe they have a warrant for their arrest or whatever but it's automatic and what I'm getting the point across to you is it's your DNA that does everything that I just said your DNA and the codes of your DNA trigger fight or flight they're the ones that make the adrenaline so that when your body needs it boom it gets it um, your DNA has the um, the chemical makeup to make spit to make um, uh, to make uh, uh, tears to make earwax uh, everything in your body is governed and run by the book are you catching what I'm saying here because that same thing applies to the church the book is what does what God wants that church to be doing it's the book that governs us it's the book that causes us automatically to do what the will and the purpose of God is the book does that that's why Jesus said lo I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O God Jesus knew that when he came to this earth things were just going to happen look we, we're studying the the uh, crucifixion of Christ uh, let's see on on, t on Sunday afternoons and we'll do it again tonight and if you in reading that we're seeing scripture fulfilled and this this was fulfilled this was done to fulfill the scriptures saying uh, and the, the fact that there were three crosses on uh, Golgotha fulfilled scripture in other words the scripture wrote it down meaning that it is going to happen 
regardless of what anybody says or think, and regardless of what anybody else tries to do to stop it, it's going to happen because it's in the book. Amen. God said, let there be light. What happened? It's that simple. All right. So let's follow this plan here. Here's the book, DNA. It's a little book. In thy book, all my members were written. This is your family. The members of your family, mommy, daddy, and little mama, and little daddy. Okay? They're all there. All my members were written, which in continuance was fashioned. The way that the uh, embryo looks at 13 weeks is not the way that the fetus will look at 23 weeks. It will look different. Some people are saying, well, we need to get back to the church was uh, back in the days of the book of Acts. We need to get back to that. Says who? Says who? The church is somewhat different now. Number one, because of the times that we live in. Number two, because of the growth of God's church, the body of Jesus Christ. It will be somewhat different in its latter end than it was at its beginning. Remember, at the beginning of you, right over here, when as yet there was none of them, you started out as a, a cell, one cell, and then two cells, and then four cells. And this is all day two, right here. Uh, eight cells, day three, 16 cells, day four, 32 cells, 64 cells, day 5, 128 cells. And it's starting to look different already than it did the first day. That's called cell differentiation. On, on the first week of you being alive in your mother's womb, really all you were was a clump of cells. But after, let's say, I don't know, 15 weeks, maybe 10 weeks, something like that, or maybe, maybe, maybe four weeks. After that, period of time has gone all of a sudden a cell comes out of a, a a new cell comes out of an old cell but that new cell does something different it starts beating like this twitching and there you have the very first heart cell and as that cell makes more heart cells, what happens? Does, do they all have to look like what the original cell looked like? No, they all take their place to be the four chambers of the heart, the valves of the heart, the functions of the heart, the, uh, the nerves of the heart, and so on. Then you start making blood, then you start making lungs, and everything is different as time goes along. It's the natural process. You look different than you did when you were in sixth grade or when you were 10 years old or 11 years old. You look different now. Worse, maybe. But that's because that's the way the cells brought it about. Amen? So in thy book, DNA, all my members were written, family, which in continuance was fashioned from a single cell to an embryo to a fetus, when as yet... There was none of them. We'll look at it like this. This is what DNA looks like. This is what Watson and Crick came up with in the 1950s. And since then, we've uh, sort of added to that, added to our, our, added our knowledge to that, our understanding of DNA and how it works and how it looks and so on. It's packaged in 46 bundles called chromosomes. Who remembers having a, a chro chromatic camera? Remember when they came out, okay, like a Kodak, Kodachrome, that's what I'm thinking of. Don't take my Kodachrome away. Kodachrome was Kodak's color camera. That's what chromo means. And they called it, they found out that these chromosomes easily uh, took in dye that they added to what they were looking at in their microscope so they could set apart the chromosomes, and they could see them uh, and notice that they were different than the rest of what was in the cell. So they said it didn't matter what color dye they used, the chromosomes always turned out that color. I like to think that th that word chromosome has to do with 
the rainbow. In Genesis 9, Ezekiel chapter 1, and Revelation chapter 10. The multicolors of the rainbow. But anyway, the DNA is in these chromosomes, and notice that they look like this. They look like this. Now, everybody in here, everybody has at least 45 X chromosomes. Only men have as the 46th chromosome, it's not in the shape of an X, it's in the shape of a Y. And that's because men are different than women. And men are always looking at their wife going, why? Why? Some stuff just doesn't make sense, guys. Amen. You're not going to amen me, you chickens. Somebody who grows their hair long. And takes hormones and puts on makeup and a dress is not a woman. If they have a Y chromosome. They are lying against their own DNA. It would be like me standing up here saying that I am Chinese African. Now, why was that so funny, Miss Fallum? Why was that so funny? I'm not, I don't look Chinese African, do I? No, uh-uh. Or be like saying Matthew's African back there, old red-headed, freckle-faced boy. He's obviously not from Ham, is he? No, he eats Ham, but he's not from Ham. Okay, so he's genetically different so, so he can't say i am african-american because i want to be can he okay no more than gloria can say i'm six foot two instead of five foot two because i want to be you're not six foot two and you never will be and that's your dna that made you that way you're going to be mad at somebody. Be mad at your own DNA. Because that's how God made you to be. Remember I said that the functions of the body mostly are automatic. Including your own height. Next time when you leave here today. If you drive some distance home. Look at all the trees that are in the woods. Isn't it something that 95% of all those trees are almost the exact same height, even though they're different species of trees. How did, they de how did the trees determine how far they were going to grow upward toward the sky? They didn't. They don't have a brain. They don't have a consciousness. All they have is DNA. And the DNA determines how big they are. That's why California redwoods are taller than Missouri cedars. And always will be. Because it's in their DNA. Okay? So 46 chromosomes placed inside the cell nucleus. Um, it's rolled in a helix form. When it's not rolled in a helix form, what does it look like? Ladder. Which brings to mind what? Jacob's ladder. And there's a, there's a connection here. Two spines, the two legs of the ladder are made of sugar and phosphorus. Sugar is sweet. Phosphorus gives light. That's what the word phosphorus means. It means light bearer. Fo like where we get the word photo from. Light bearer. They're linked together by four different compounds. And I'll just tell them to you. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Those are the four things the the steps of the ladder 
are going to be made of adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Now, as they, as they were trying to teach me this in school, I didn't want to listen. So I probably just barely passed the test. And then I could kick myself years later when I started looking at this and studying it out the way I understand it now. And I'm like, why didn't I listen in school? This would have been a lot easier. But anyway, that's how it works. So you have these two legs of the ladder and they're joined together by four compounds. Let me show it to you like this. Here is... your DNA. Here it is. Here's the Old Testament. Here's the New Testament. And here's the four compounds, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, or as we call them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And where does Jesus, who is the Word of God, show up as far as this Bible's concerned? Right here in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In fact, John started his Gospel out by calling Jesus what? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the words of your DNA book are right there where those, see that, those red and blue and yellow and green letters are? Each one of those represents like one of the Gospels but it represents one of the four compounds that make up your, in other words, your gene sequence and the letters of your book are all written right here, right in the middle. And let's say that A and A and C make the letter, uh, I don't know, B, okay? And then T and G and T make the letter um, A. And then let's say that A, C, and T made the word, or made the letter Y. So now we have a word, B. Okay? And that's how DNA is read in your body. For every three connections of adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thiamine, the body forms what's called an amino acid. An amino acid is just like a letter in the alphabet. And when the amino acids are arranged in a certain order, that makes a word and then a sentence of the book of your DNA. If I were to give you the three letters that I just gave you, B, A, and Y, and you put them as YBA, is that a word? Okay. Uh, or you put it as YAB, is that a word? Yab. Yeah, to yab something. To yab, I'm, after church, I'm going to yab my sister. No, I'm just making that up. That doesn't make a word, it doesn't make sense. So in order for those three letters to make any sense, we have to put them in the right order, don't we? B-A-Y, correct? Who is it that put these letters in the right order so that they could be read? The author of the book did. And the author of the book is God. You cannot take... A, a, I've got a box of uh, wooden letter blocks upstairs I use for illustration sometimes. You cannot take that box of wooden letters, George, throw it out into the front yard of the church and in a million years have it make a word or a sentence, mind you, a whole sentence. You cannot do that. It will not work. Books have to be written. Yes, brother. Yeah. They're, they've got a missing chromosome. No, they have an extra one. 47th chromosome. Yeah. yeah. So they're, so they're, you know, so. What happens when you add to the book? It does, it's, yeah. You know, I'm not saying that uh, people with Down syndrome are cursed. I'm just saying, look what happens when you add something to God's book. 
And listen, I was, I was talking against DNA editing. I've been saying that now for 10, 12 years, something like that, that they're going to start editing people's DNA. 2024, more than likely, is going to be the year that they start allowing doctors to do that. They are going to promise you that it's going to cure cancer. They're going to promise you it's going to cure Alzheimer's. It's going to cure all manner of diseases. Listen, knowing what I know about God's book, I would rather die with all of these diseases and then live at home in heaven forever than to go through life whole and to enter into hell. What did Jesus say? If thy right hand offend thee, do what with it? Now people will say, oh, he didn't really mean that. Well, if my hand had an infection in it, and that infection didn't heal up, and my hand was basically rotting on my arm, and I knew I had to, if I don't get rid of that, it's going to infect the rest of the body. What am I going to do? Cut my, the, a guy did that. He got stuck in the Moab uh, State Park there in Utah. He was, he was hiking through this little narrow uh, canyon and a stone came down and fell into that crack and it trapped his arm right here up against... The, and he stood there for like eight days drinking his own urine to stay alive and finally he realized that that hand was dead. He could smell it. And he had nothing but a real cheap swiss army knife and he started the process of cutting his own arm off he broke the bones and he said when i got to that last nerve it's like lightning shot through my body but he was able to cut that last nerve and walk away and he's alive today but he had to cut off that which offended him and again i would rather go through life maim than to go through life whole but enter into hell to me it's that simple you don't add to God's word. You don't take away from God's word. Uh, the, the makeup of your DNA is just, it's just, I mean, it is just like Morse code. There's dashes and there's dots. Anybody who knows Morse code, you know that, in fact, everybody knows SOS. It's dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. S, dot, dot, dot. O, O, dash, 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 and then dot, dot, dot again. And if you ever are in trouble... You flash SOS to somebody or make a sound or whatever, but that means whatever SOS means. That means help, I'm in trouble. And your DNA is structured very much like Morse code. The way an A is here and a C and a T is determines what letters are going to end up there, all right? Um, a codon equals a letter. The word codon. There's 64 possible combinations of it. In John 7, 15, the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Well, Jesus knew the letters because he invented them. Amen? And Jesus knew how to read DNA long before Watson and Crick, Crick did, long before scientists did, long before... And let me tell you this. DNA edit, editing is not only going to become a quick fix... For most of man's diseases, we're talking about a health, um, a, a medical health market that will be worth trillions of dollars. See, now they're not going to give you these DNA changes for free. What is the root of all evil? Love of money. And people will, people will sell their souls for money. It happens every single day. Um, all right, I already explained that. By the way, there's 22 amino acids and there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Now you tell me that that's a mistake and prove it to me in a way that I'll believe it and I'll believe you. But here we are talking about God's book that he wrote. He not only wrote it so that it could be read like a book, because you have the genetic sequence that makes your tongue or it makes a brain cell. Then you have what's called a stop codon, 
that tells whoever's reading the DNA that the gene that was making the brain cell, the formula for it, ends here. And then you have a start codon, and that tells um, the body that uh, you're starting a new uh, set of genes that's going to make uh, maybe hair cells or blood cells, or it's going gonna, it's gonna to add to your liver cells and so on. So we have two of the codons, start and stop codon, plus we have how many different possible uh, combinations? 64. What's 64 plus 2? 64 plus 2. 66. There you go. Psalm 119 gives us those letters. Aleph, Beth, Tav, Gimel, and so on. All the way down. Uh, I said Tav. Tav is the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And they're mentioned in Psalm 119. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quickening according to thy judgments. And what you see here is DNA rolled up just like a scroll or a roll of a book is rolled up. When the book is rolled up, can you read it? No, you can't read it. It's rolled up. So it has to be opened. It has to be unrolled. When Jesus receives the book, is it open or closed? It's closed. And it can't be read. Which means that the genes of it cannot be expressed. Or uh, what is contained in the book cannot happen. But you remember Jesus stood up he, in the synagogue in Luke chapter 4. And he received the book in his hand. It was the book of Isaiah. How many chapters does Isaiah have? 66. 66. He took the book in his hand and he opened the book. He was acting out what he's going to do in Revelation 5 and 6. He's opening the book. And he reads part of Psalm 6, or, uh, Isaiah 61. And when he reads it, he cuts it off mid-sentence and he sits down and everybody's looking at him. And he says, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. In other words, he didn't fulfill the whole Bible in that one synagogue meeting. He just came to fulfill a part of it that was necessary on that day. Somebody say amen. amen. And then he closed the book. And while the book is closed, can it be read? No, it can only be read while it's open. And the same thing applies to DNA. Your DNA and your cells right now is all coiled up. They're all twisted. They're rolled up. And they cannot be read. So what happens... Chris, let's say you need, um, you're still thinking about that steak, and so your mouth has just been producing saliva nonstop. Okay, you're drooling down this side of your mouth. I didn't want to tell anybody, but you are. And then your body still needs saliva. So it goes back to the DNA. And the DNA, there's a machine called, um, oh, what's it called? I'll have to remember it. But this little machine in your body, a living machine scans your DNA and when it finds the place that makes saliva, it opens the book to that spot. It then takes half of the, of the double helix and makes a copy of it. And then once a copy is made of what makes spit, it puts the old part back into the book and it rolls it back up again and closes it, just like Jesus did in Luke 4. And then it takes that transcription, that, that copy of the Bible, of your DNA, and it starts the process of pulling the materials together, the proteins, and then it folds the proteins. The instructions on folding the proteins are in the DNA code too. And once it has it made, what you have spittle made in these glands, then now you can have more water and more spit in your mouth. That's how it works. And again, the book is always in charge of that. Amen? Let's pray, always, not just today, but always, that God's word would always be in charge in this church. Amen? Father, we do love you. We thank you so much, Father, for I love this teaching. I love it. And I thank you for it, God. We didn't come from monkeys. 
We didn't evolve. We're not turning into a higher life form. In fact, Father, when I look at this world right now, it seems to me it's going in the opposite direction. Just like your word said that these false prophets and false teachers are beasts made to be taken and destroyed. So, Father, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for the book that you've given us, the book of life that exists in all of our cells. And, Father, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for baby Jesus, who was in every way exactly identical to his heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to this earth to be born in Bethlehem, to save our soul from our sins. Thank you, God, for giving us the word of God, the book. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us as we read that book. We ask now your blessings in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen.